What shirt should I wear to see Deadpool 2 today? Obviously a good one. Obviously a better one. Yeah! Oh, what? Um, um, I'm reviewing a Deadpool comic today. Not, not the movie. Sorry. <laughs>
I don't know. I thought there was a little bit of heart to this story. And so overall, I kind of dug it. I, I think out of the two between this and Back in Black, I like this one a little bit more as a Deadpool, re you know, non-Deadpool reader, uh, but as someone who like likes certain Deadpool stories and doesn't really like them strictly as the jokester, I like when a little heart is added in at times. And this is one of those stories. And of course, you can't do one of these stories without doing a bunch of just jokey Deadpool stories. And then you build up to something with heart. So it works better that way. And I thought Colin Bunn did, you know, in my opinion, did a little bit of a better job here. Plus the artwork was really great in this storyline. Uh, so, but in it, there's this one moment where, you know, in the original Secret Wars, Peter Parker, or Spider-Man, his costume's ripped up. He goes by, he sees the Thor, or he sees the Hulk and Thor, and he says, hey, uh, you know, can, is there anywhere I can get my costume fixed? Because you guys look, we just went into battle, and you guys look, you know, great. Like, your costumes have been repaired, apparently. Or at least Thor's was. He goes, and then Thor's like, oh, yeah, there's a costume repair machine thing in that next room. So while Thor was telling Spider-Man that, Deadpool apparently was in the room trying on the black costume for the first time. So he puts the helmet on and the black costume comes out, bonds on him, and then within like a minute or two, like within a page or two, he realizes the suit is trying to infect his mind uh, because he's crazy and he starts to realize there's another voice in his head. And so he instantly picks up on, you know, the fact that it's trying to take over. So he's like, oh my God. So he tears it off, puts it back in the machine. And then Spider-Man walks in and says, hey, is there, you know, anything around here that can fix, you know, my clothes? And Deadpool's like, yeah, it's that thing over there. Of course, we know that moment in Secret Wars when Spider-Man went into the room, he, there was no one in there. And he just walked right up to the machine and put the cap on and gave him the alien symbiote. But in this one, you know, Deadpool's like, you know, hey, man, go do that. And then later, uh, you know, after he persuaded Peter to use that specific machine, uh, later on, they erase everyone's mind. So that's why Deadpool was never mentioned in Secret Wars, I guess. That's kind of what Colin Bunn's going for, is that everyone gets like a wish at the end and, uh, and then something happens and it you know messes with all their minds or one of them wishes that none of them remember Deadpool being there or something like that and uh, and they're all like you know mind wiped because I think in the book he like sleeps with the wasp uh, and he like and he hooks up with her and he hooks up with this healing lady and so it's like there's a lot going on there but like I said there's also a little bit of a character arc for him so I think Colin Bunn overall did pretty good but there's not a ton of symbiote stuff to talk about uh, in this story so it's just that one moment but with that being said let's dive into the real meat of this episode which is Deadpool back in Black. Deadpool Back in Black is a five-issue miniseries. It's written by Colin Bunn and art by Espen Salva, who does a great job. And I think Colin Bunn teamed up with really good artists on these two books. Uh, you know, Salva does a great job on this one, and Matteo Lali drew uh, Secret Secret Wars and did an amazing job on that one. I felt I loved the like even the coloring was really good. Uh, everything was really nice. The panels were laid out really clean. Uh, so I actually like the artwork on both these books very very much. Uh, but in this one, it kind of starts off in Web of Spider-Man number one when Peter separates himself from the suit and then you see the suit you know kind of fizzling away and the church bells are going off and the church bells are possibly going to kill peter and the suit pulls peter down the stairs to safety to the level underneath but then realizes you know peter's body's too weak to re you know rebond with uh, and it would kill them both possibly so it decides to slink away into the darkness and then from there it just hides out in the church for a while so it doesn't go immediately to eddie brock as we've kind of seen portrayed before, or at least hinted at before, or alluded to before, where they're like, hey, it kind of goes right to him. Uh, this whole book is about one night where the suit goes to Deadpool. Uh, so it, it's hanging out in the church, and like a priest finds it, or like a, a janitor at the church or something finds it, feeds it candy, and kind of nurtures it. And then uh, the, then like a bunch of aliens show up. I think it's th uh, Killer Thrill, uh, that stupid character from uh, the Poison book, or Poison X book crossover uh, that Colin Bunn did later on. Uh, who I didn't really like in that book, and I just didn't get a sense. It's like, oh, it's a space bounty hunter, but okay, past that, what's her thing and what's her story? And again, in this one, doesn't really show a lot there. Uh, there are different alien races that are coming to Earth and, you know, getting caught up in the story, but it's mainly her and her bandit, uh, you know, band of misfits, I guess, space misfits. And, uh, and then so you have the suit saving this janitor guy trying to do a nice thing since the janitor guy like nurtured the suit uh, while it was sick or while it was you know still healing and then it goes off and it eventually comes across Deadpool and merges with Deadpool and it's like all right let's let's you know use this guy to go kill Spider-Man and so Deadpool is kind of fighting it at first like hey wait Spider-Man's a good guy I'm not gonna go kill him and uh, and the suit's like no we, we got to go get our revenge and he's like yeah but 
let's go just do other things first. So the suit gives him spider powers like it did to Eddie Brock. So Deadpool's like swinging around New York and everything, and he gets the attention of Black Cat and Craven the Hunter. Uh, and so throughout these books, you know, like each story is like one issue, like almost one story off, or like, all right, here's like two hours of his night, and then the next issue is like another two hours of his night. So he goes through, it goes through like that. It's told, uh, told more like one and dones, but then like with a connecting thread. So I kind of like that aspect of it. Uh, in the first story, like I said, you have the suit bonding with Deadpool. In the second issue, you have uh, uh, Deadpool teaming up with the Power Pack. And uh, basically their you know, home gets invaded by these aliens uh, that are after various things on Earth. I think the sim they come across the Clintar symbiote and they're like, hey, we know what that is. You know, we got to get it. And then, of course, Deadpool fights back, teams up with Power Pack. They beat those aliens up. And then in the third issue, a uh, uh, killer thriller, whatever her name is, she shows up to fight uh, Deadpool, but he's teaming up with Black Cat, and Black Cat thinks he's Spider-Man. So I really didn't like how Colin Bunn wrote uh, Black Cat in this story, because she just comes across as like this ditz who can't tell the difference between, you know, Spider-Man and this guy. Like she was kind of in love with Spider-Man around this point in the comics, and she's kind of going up to him and talking to him, uh, and she has talked to him plenty of times before. So you, you would think she could tell the difference between just because he's swinging around like Spider-Man and looks a little similar. He is in black. So she's like, all right, you're kind of like Spider-Man. He's like, no, I'm not Spider-Man. She's like, I know you're not Spider-Man all the time, silly. And it's like, oh man, like you know, this character, black cat's so much more of an interesting character than that. And I feel like she was just kind of like the, the, not even the damsel, but she does become the damsel in distress because she gets wounded by a killer thrill and Deadpool has to save her. Uh, but then she gets mind controlled and her and Deadpool get in a fight and then he has to save her again. So that's pretty much what happens in issue three. And uh, I wasn't fully you know, into how, uh, how Cullen Bunn wrote Black Cat in this. But again, the art was really good. So, it, you know, the action scenes looked great. Everything was, you know, paced and panel, you know, structure was really good. So I kind of got into it for that reason and more more of that than less of the story. So that's why Secret Secret Wars, I liked a little bit more than this because this one felt like it wasn't writing some of the characters to their fullest potential. Uh, but the next one was kind of fun. It was called Craven's Second to second to last hunt so obviously this is right before uh craven's last hunt in the comic books in that one peter parker had the cloth uh you know black costume he wasn't on the symbiote anymore but he was still wearing the black costume and craven the hunter like tried to kill him and then buried him alive and that whole storyline which is one of my favorite all-time spider-man stories uh, out there uh but so this is like the the event that leads to that this is deadpool him thinking deadpool spider-man and then deadpool's like i'm not spider-man and then craven unlike Black Cat, is like, okay, yeah, you're not Spider-Man. He's like, but I need to hunt Spider-Man. And then the suit goes crazy and says, no, like, you know, like, I need to kill Spider-Man. So it's like fighting Kraven, knocking him down. And then it says, you know what? I do want Spider-Man to die, but this host won't let me go to him. So if you go to Spider-Man, go kill him. And he's like encouraging Kraven to go essentially do what he does in Kraven's last hunt. So I was like, all right, it's a little bit of Red Connie stuff there and adding to the continuity, but I kind of liked it a little bit. And I'm a big Kraven the Hunter fan. So anytime he pops up in a story, I'm usually already a fan of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, my bias just goes right through the roof when I see him. Uh, but I thought it was kind of neat. And the suit is like, kill him, use a gun, use whatever you got to do. Stop using the berries and the poison darts and stuff and just kill the guy. And then of course, you know, Deadpool and the suit leave after that. And Deadpool's realizing that the suit is just out of control. So so the fifth issue is pretty much Deadpool just trying to get rid of the suit and uh, dealing with that, dealing with one last battle with the killer thrill or whatever, bitter arm off as Venom. He turns into full on Venom as, you know, in the Deadpool costume, chews on her arm, rips it off, sends her back to her, you know, her, her the person who hired her in space who like said to come to earth. And then they were, you know, she's like, Hey, I found a Clintar thing. It tried to kill me. It ripped off my arm. So, you know, mission aborted for now. Uh, but I will definitely, you know, eventually get the bounty on this thing for you. And, uh, and so, you know, then it cuts back to Earth and he got rid of the suit and Deadpool's kind of hanging outside of a church where the suit has been, you know, retreated to. So once the suit is ripped off Deadpool uh, and they also saved Spider-Man that last issue. So Spider-Man spends the whole fifth issue knocked unconscious and, uh, you know, Killer Thrill is going to take his life. But then Deadpool shows up with the suit and then the suit even wants to kill Spider-Man. But Deadpool stops it one last time and the suit separates from him and goes back to the church. So that's pretty much how the book ends. You have Deadpool walking away from the church and, you know, he left Eddie Brock in there to have his, you know, fateful meeting with the symbiote. And uh, like I said, if you're a big Venom fan, you're probably not going to really like this book too much. It messes with the continuity too much and it writes some of the Spider-Man characters. It kind of dumbs some of them down. Um, 
even the power pack stuff, although it was kind of fun, just everyone just felt like they were, you know, the back seat to Deadpool in a bad way. Like not like, oh, they're balanced well or they or they have a small part, but they, you know, it matters to an extent. I felt it was the opposite. I think Cullen Bunn just got so excited to write Deadpool again and put all of his energy into that that he actually told he had decent Deadpool moments. But as a full story, this one didn't work as well for me as Secret Secret Wars. I thought that was a much better, you know, beginning, middle and end Deadpool story that had a little bit of heart to it, but it had some comedy and comedy that landed. I think back in black, some of the comedy fell flat to me. I didn't really like some of the jokes and the gags that were in there. And uh, and although the journey with the symbiote, you know, Colin Bunn definitely paid attention to of like him helping the janitor and then, you know, you know, trying to kill Spider-Man and then, you know, and reasons why it would like Eddie even more. It's all neat, but it's all unnecessary. You didn't really need this story told to add anything to the Venom universe. I feel like this this adds more to the Deadpool universe, which makes sense. It's called Deadpool Back in Black. It's not called Venom, you know, second host or something like that. Uh, but uh, but still, you know, wasn't my favorite. Uh, but I love the art in both the books. I think for those reasons alone, they're worth checking out because the artwork in both these books is fantastic. Uh, but if you read these, let me know what you think down below. Uh, I'm not you know, going to rate these. This is more of a discussion video, uh, but I did overall, like I said, I liked Secret Secret Wars a lot more. And this one, Back in Black, was just kind of, it was mad to me. Uh, as a, as someone who doesn't constantly read Deadpool books, I kind of enjoyed it, um, but not as much as I enjoyed Secret Secret Wars, which I've said to ad nauseum. So check out Secret Secret Wars. That's my recommendation from this video. Back in Black, you can skip it if you want to, but if you want everything symbiote related, pick it up. There's some cool stuff in there. So thanks so much for watching my videos. As always, guys, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace. What are you still doing here? I already finished talking about Secret Secret Wars and Back in Black, so that's it. I'm not reviewing the movie. Yeah, I saw it, but I'm not reviewing it. And yeah, hold your horses. We'll get to Deadpool versus Carnage, okay? Just give me some time. So that's it. Go on. See you next time.